the court finds as follows. A. The deceased is Ahmed Esop Timor, a South African citizen aged 29 at the time of his death. B. The cause of death is massive head, brain and chest, vital center damage and compromised respiratory injuries. C. The death, date of death remains unchanged 27 October 1971. D. Timor's death was brought about by an act of having been pushed from the 10th floor or roof of the John Foster Square building to fall to the ground, such act having been committed through dolus eventualis as the form of intent and prima facie amounting to murder. There's a prima facie evidence implicating Gloy and Van Nigel who were on duty and interrogating Timor at the time he was pushed to fall to his death. Rodriguez, on his own version, participated in the cover-up to conceal the crime of murder as an accessory after the fact, and went on to commit perjury by presenting contradictory evidence before the 1972 and the 2017 inquest. He should accordingly be investigated with a view to his prosecution. In terms of Section 17A3C of the Act, the record of proceedings is hereby submitted to the Director of Public Prosecutions. Recommendations. The 2017 reopened inquest, the first of its kind in South Africa, has revealed a number of lessons to be learned. Of importance is that all branches of the state have to ensure that the boundaries set by the Constitution for the respect of human rights and dignity should never be crossed. It should be the task of all branches of the state to begin to develop a culture of intolerance to any form of human rights violations. One of the drawbacks with this reopened inquest is the fact that the reopening came late in the day when most of the members of the security branch involved in the interrogation of Timor and the investigation thereof had passed on. In addition, the court had to do with the mysterious disappearance of the 1972 inquest record that dealt with the evidence of the police officials in court, and in particular page three of the affidavit of Rodriguez, which according to the magistrate's judgment explained how Timor fell. Consequently, the key witnesses who would have been called to testify in regard to the events preceding the fall were not available. It is therefore important for the future that the state ensures that records of inquest are preserved, considering the fact that the Act provides for reopening without any limitation as to time. The inquest also revealed that there are many more families who are seeking closure on the unanswered questions concerning the death of their relatives in detention. They, like all families, whose relatives died in detention need healing, they need closure. It is thus the view of this court that the families whose relatives died in detention, particularly those who where the inquest returned a finding of death by suicide, should be assisted at their initiative to obtain the records and gather further information with a view to have initial inquest reopened. The Human Rights Commission working in consultation with law enforcement agencies should be sufficiently resourced to take on this task. It will be remiss of this court not to address an issue on which Bezos' evidence put a spotlight. This is the impropriety role played by some of the magistracy, prosecuting authorities, and medical experts in the past inquest proceedings. Bezos' evidence reveals the role of some of these public officials in being complicit in exonerating members of the security branch from the crimes they committed. The 1972 inquest into the death of Timor is one such example. From the outset, it had to take a court order to allow Timor's family and their lawyers access to case documents before the inquest commenced. 
The evidence of the 1972 inquest further demonstrates how the prosecution made no effort to obtain evidence other than that of the police. And the magistrate attempting to explain away the pre-fall injuries without any shred of evidence supporting his statement concerning the brawl. Bezos also makes reference in his publication to the inquest into the death of Steve Bantu Bigo. The much publicized and documented unprofessional conduct of the doctors who testified in that inquest illustrates the point. Doctors, like lawyers, take an oath. In their profession, it is a Hippocratic oath. Every professional lawyer and public official survives on integrity. Magistrates and prosecutors are lawyers participating in administration of justice and are expected to discharge their functions in terms of the oath they were sworn to uphold. For all public office bearers of the state, an oath is sacrosanct. Apart from their knowledge of and experience in the practice of law, lawyers, in particular judicial officers, are expected to bring to bear their honesty, independence, personal and professional integrity, and ability to act without fear or favor in the administration of justice. It is not ethical and proper on the part of a judicial officer to preside over or decide cases either out of fear or in favor of a person, entity, or institution, or in expectation of promotion or reward, or in advancement of some real or perceived interest. Judicial officers have to be loyal only to the Constitution and the cause of justice. Public officials in the administration of justice are also enjoined by the law to jealously guard against casting aspersions on the integrity of the judicial system by conducting themselves in a manner contrary to the oath of office. Such conduct has no place in a constitutional democracy. I hand down the judgment.